And to make more sense of this menace in Lake Victoria, Larry Mado on the other side in the Kisumu studio with a guest. All right, you know, if we can, let me take, give you the sense of how big of a problem this is. So when I checked into my hotel this evening, and this is a, a KJ Premier Hotel that directly overlooks the lake, and the whole view was covered with hyacinth. So it's kind of, that's the one thing you come into, into the city and it automatically hits you. So I brought in Dr. Christopher Aura. He is an expert in these matters, so he would know about this. Let me introduce him properly. He's Assistant Director of Freshwater Systems Research, and he's also the Centre Director for Kisumu at the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. He's got a PhD in uh, bio resource and environmental science. So thank you so much for coming into NTV this evening. Thank you. Let's start with Oko's story about this pathogen that feeds on the hyacinth. Could this be the game changer to getting rid of this weed in, in Lake Victoria? First of all, thank you, Larry, and NTV for having me in the studio. Um, this pathogen, uh, we, when we were in Mwanza, there was um, a presentation mm -hmm. from a Tanzanian researcher and he, he came with the preliminary findings. And this, uh, I'm calling it preliminary because we had a lot of questions about the, this fungi. Right. Because it was a fungi. And the, one of the questions is, at what rate is uh, this fungi able to attack the water hyacinth? So basically, can it be able to tackle it at scale or will yes, it be too yes. small to yeah, make Yeah, so difference? the scale was not defined. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, uh, the, he was not able to tell us if this pathogen can also affect other uh, organisms in the water. So it is uh, its preliminary findings, and I do believe, as in due time, maybe we'll ascertain the what scale and other clarification even of the fungi, because the clarification was not even defined. All right, so this would just be the latest attempt to try and deal with this situation, right? Because there have been before maybe attempts to deal with it by, for instance, introducing weevils as it beetles. And how, how far did that go? Yes, uh, introduction of weevils and beetles uh, is even in the process. It's being undertaken by Lake Victoria Environmental uh, Program. It's a World Bank uh, project, yes. Uh, but um, the main issue is that um, these mainly are on a trial basis. And um, another thing is that the weevil, uh, mostly to an extent, it only attacks the, stol the stallion or the the mat, to an extent the seed bank uh, remains not uh, probably affected with the weevil. So it is a kind of a biological measure, yes. And uh, Levemba at the same time they have bought, uh, uh, they have bought uh, water hires in harvester. And um, um, of course there are procurement issues as this was, it was mentioned. And we do believe that uh, one, the harvester probably starts the work uh, and uh, probably with the accurate science, because as came through, we have, we have come up with a prediction map to tell where the hyacinth is and uh, uh, when, where that hyacinth is in those particular bays. So with the accurate science and with this um, harvester, perhaps it might play a role, but there is a lot to explain about the science. So how much of a problem is this on the Kenyan side of the lake? What percentages are we talking about that's under this water hyacinth? Yes, in terms of uh, coverage, uh, the highest coverage occurred in uh, October last year. That's around 16th of October, and it covered around 15,000 15, hectares. But in terms of, um, in terms of the average uh, from when it was introduced, it uh, covers about 4% of the lake, which is about uh, uh, 5,000 hectares of the lake. You're a scientist. Is the water hyacinth harmful to the lake? Yes, it is. How so? Yeah, water hyacinth in the lake is harmful because, uh, one, it uh, depletes oxygen. And, you know, dissolved oxygen is very important for living organisms. And if it depletes oxygen, um, it, um, it, has, it endangers the biodiversity of the lake in that uh, uh, only those uh, organisms, like even fish, those particular types of fish that can tolerate those uh, low oxygen levels thrive or can only fa be found in abundance. Does it An example is the catfish. The that is very popular here. Yeah, mainly the catfish thrives, eh? mm -hmm. or thrive, uh, catfish can be found in abundance only. In the, and of course, I'm not saying that other fish may not be found. They will, yes, but in low, low abundance levels. Is it true that Tanzania and Uganda have done a better job of dealing with the hyacinth that Kenya has? And if that's so, what have they done that we haven't done? Yes, I, I know of Tanzania where they are using fishermen to manually remove the 
as in, in the fringes, that is on the shore. Yes, um, the removal can be done, yes, but uh, the water has in seed bank is known to stay in the lake bed for about 5 to 21 years. So it will still germinate in due course with optimum conditions. And optimum conditions, I mean uh, temperatures of about 25 to 27, that's optimum. Um, and uh, at the same time, incre increased enrichment of nutrients or loading into the lake. Yes. The alternative, therefore, some people have said, is to make the hyacinth an economic activity. That yes. way, it's already exists in abundance. You yes. might as well find a way to use it gainfully. Sure. And then uh, uh, through the office of His Excellency the President, they have come up with what we, what we call the blue economy concept. Under the blue economy concept, this is where you attach value to an aquatic resource. You, you think in terms of what can you derive from this aquatic resource. And um, uh, people have already started thinking about uh, doing what we call the 3D uh, printing, uh, like production of biodegradable plastics from water hyacinth. And uh, we've known uh, uh, some time back, we are using it for manure and or fertilizer production. So if we try to look at water hyacinth in, that, in those prisms, uh, perhaps it is one of the, what I'm calling adaptive measures okay. uh, for, for water hyacinth eradication. Finally, Dr. Aura, real yes. quick. You were just talking about the scientific conference in Mwanza. Yes. A lot of papers are presented at places like these, but yes. are they just talk shops or do these ideas ever get implemented? Yes, the idea, I believe ideas can get implemented if they have a mouth. And uh, that's why I thank NTV for giving us this opportunity to explain the science or some little information about this. If this information could get to donors, could get to the um, potential funders, they can uh, think of how, for example, as I've said, to develop uh, uh, biodegradable uh, plastics from water hyacinth. And this can help. Uh, even the fish, the fishers in right. the lake, navigators and transporters in the lake to use the lake appropriately. Yes. We'll leave it there. Dr. Christopher thank Aura, you. thank you so much for thank coming you. in mm -hmm. with the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute talking about the major problem of the hyacinth here.